Welcome back, everybody. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee, and our next guest is a New York City singer, songwriter, and guitarist. She can play, she can sing. She joins us today to talk about her new song, Should Have Been. That's from her latest album, Two Sides. Two Sides. Please welcome to the show, Kirsten Fiend. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> All right. How are you? So oh, I've been hearing about you. They said that uh, you can really belt some notes yeah, and you can play that that, that guitar so yeah. uh, and you can write i got and the surprise you, factor <laughs> you, yeah and how did you get involved in all of this when did you get involved well i started singing when i was when i was a young girl and uh wow. and then you know as i was growing up talent shows and church and whatnot and then yeah. uh when i got to college i got more into popular music and um, also joined a jazz band that focused on the music from the wow. 20s to the 40s in New Orleans. So that's where I learned about the blues. Whoa! Yeah, <laughs> from the really early, early spins. So and, Kirsten uh, sings the blues. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that could be an album. I don't know. Uh, next one. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I want credit. Yeah. <laughs> you can write the liner notes. I love that. There you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so just got into it, and, and I started as a singer, but um, at some point I realized I wanted to start writing songs, so that's really kind of led to the longevity of my life in music, is uh, the writing has always driven that, so. Yeah, is it mostly the blues, or only the blues, or? No, not at all, you know, when we talk about the record, I, I, I let the, you know, the music guide me, and I have a lot of influences. You know, when I was growing up as yeah. a kid, I listened to only pop radio in the 80s. So, uh -oh. <laughs> you know, there was that. And then, you know, I started getting into the blues and roots music and, uh, you know, rock and roll, and then starting, you know, hearing my dad's rock and roll come back to me through the blues that came before it. And um, so there's so many influences, so I always let the muse guide me. And so it doesn't you, always got to be to a straight blues song. It could be anything. Yeah. So your dad, you have a musical family, and uh, mm -hmm. who, he was one of your main influences, right? Who are some of your other influences? Well, um, let's see. Uh, I'll never forget when I was a kid. I grew up in Maine, and uh, I'll never forget there was an ad for a show called Moonlighting. And it had Bruce Willis. He popped up, and he started singing Respect. <laughs> yeah. And I heard Aretha Franklin for the first time through that, that television ad. And so Aretha is one of my biggest influences, love her. Um, and of course the early blues women, Ida Cox, Bessie Smith, uh, Ma Rainey, it just, and Bonnie Raitt, of course, uh, you know, yeah. she really gave credit to the blues and, and uh, you know, I, through her, I discovered a lot of earlier blues and the, some of the guitar players that I wasn't really into guitar at the time. You know, I was really into singing, uh, but started to get into the guitar stuff too. So <laughs> it's just yeah. Buddy Guy. I wrote a song for Buddy Guy on my next record. So, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. How did you meet up with the Sandra DeCosta and the Bullion Foundation? Oh, goodness. Uh, we met a number of years ago through our friend Ed Keen, who's an agent for Nina Freelon and others, and through my mentor, Ann Rockert. And um, I started doing some, some school visits with her and playing music in the schools and just getting up with my guitar and, and singing songs. And um, actually, so there's a song on the album called Say It Out Loud. And it was yeah. so, you know, it's a song about dreaming and just you know, you got to say it out loud, then people will help you. And, and all of a sudden, you know, you get this, this force of nature behind you to follow your dreams. Yeah. And singing that song with the kids in the school and getting them to go, say it out loud. <laughs> say oh, it out loud. Oh, wait a minute now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like, it's just right, amazing. I got a microphone, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, just to hear a chorus of kids singing that back to you it's just uh -huh. there's nothing like it nothing like it excellent excellent and so uh this music that you um that you've been doing what do you think what are you thinking about doing after this i mean you know after because there's always a new project coming mm -hmm. you have, and you're putting it out and the yeah. name of the is name of the album is two sides two sides yeah yeah 
because it's actually on vinyl. I love it, all the vinyl behind you. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot that was there. It's, yeah. It goes all the way down. It goes all the yep. way up. Let me see what it goes. You got a lot of records, and those are heavy. Yeah. I got 20 of them right here, and they're like, Ugh! Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, 20. And DJ, DJ used to carry them, you know, we used to carry them out there. Oh, my and that's God. That's how we kept in shape. I, you but, absolutely did. But you have real vinyl for the music that you, you have out? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the vinyl comes out uh, uh, Friday. Friday, November 13th, a week from tomorrow. Yeah. yeah a week See, from Kirsten, tomorrow. a lot of people thought vinyl was over, you know, but people are still yeah. doing it. People still want it. It's they want to put out. that needle on the record. Oh, gosh. I mean, I did that, to me, I, I did that when I was a kid, so I don't know how much of it's nostalgia, but I do know some yeah. young people who are who are really into it. Um, but yeah, when we started working on this project, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the genres and, and a lot of the songs on the record are, are different kinds of genres. They have a different musical feel. So I kind of started to think about it as two sides to uh, a 45, really. And yeah and guiding the record and the ordering of the song so that someone would have a real experience. And then we decided to put yeah. it on vinyl and that was it. Wow, two side, that's yeah. right. Side A and side B. So you side took it back there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so okay, that's, that's the, there's the identification right there. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes the side B was better than the side A and vice versa. Well, oh gosh, I love that you said that. <laughs> The, I, I totally agree because you know in the music business we say do you have an A side does she have yeah, an A yeah, side yeah. <laughs> but there's so Sandra many knows. times what Sandra knows yeah that's right that's right do, do they have an A side <laughs> so yeah. yeah um you know to me the, it's you know I love the the discovery of turning that album over and what's next and we lose yeah. a lot of that in the you know in the streaming world it's just kind of all over the place. But you know, when you really pick that record up and turn it over, you get that little pause of discovery, you know, and anticipation. Yeah. So the one that, uh, that you're focusing on right now is uh, should have been or should have been? Should have been. Mm -hmm. Should have been. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And that's the first song in the album. Um, it's a song about no regrets. You know, a lot of the things I should have been in the song is I, I should have been a basketball player. Yeah. I could never be a basketball player. I don't want to spend time or waste time thinking, oh, this is what I should have done or should have been. It's right, more right. I'm just, I'm going to be who I am and, and make it work. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Yeah. So what did it take to put all of that together? Were, were you, were you feeling how, how, what, how did that come about? Well, um, the song was actually recorded way before COVID. So it, it's an interesting sort of straddling of, you know, you, you, you did something before and there's like the before and the after <laughs> the lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so we were just about ready with the whole record. And then, you know, the lockdown happened and we, we postponed everything. And so when June came around, we decided it's time to go. We got to get this, this puppy out and, you know, we're going to be locked down for a long time. So we got to figure things out. So yeah, um, yeah, it just, it's all about just, you know, pulling from wherever, you know, get the, get the free trial of Final Cut Pro and figure it out. So that's uh -oh, how. Oh, watch out. Yeah. Our producers, <laughs> our, our producers ears, they kind of perked up when you mentioned Final Cut Pro. <laughs> oh man, so, it was. So what are your plans with the, with the new project? What are your plans? Well, um, definitely doing a lot more trying to get the home concerts going and, and that'll be that'll be something good that comes out of this doing more videos. Um, you know, the way the should have been video came about. Uh, we had footage from the studio and from the band room when we mm -hmm. actually recorded it. Um, but we didn't have any video of me back in the booth with my guitar and, and singing the song and playing. So what did we do? We just said, okay, here's what we got. We got the band on one side. We don't have any of Kirsten. So I've got a, a pit that's right there. That's like out, out the basement. And, uh, and so we went down into the pit and just filmed from the pit in New York city, you know, it's a cool backdrop. And, yeah. And uh, I think the neighbors kind of thought I was crazy down in this little dungeon area. 
<laughs> and you got to do what you got to do to make it happen, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, so That's we'll be doing a lot more home. Say it again. Say, say that again. You got a lot more home. Oh, we'll do, do a lot more home videos and, and Zoom concerts and, and uh, looking at creative ways to kind of get the band in the room without being in the room or finding creative spaces to, to film our show or do live shows. All right. You know, I, I always ask if uh, you can sing, uh, I've got a microphone. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Take us out with a short piece of snippet or whatever. If you can, if you want to. If not, we'll just have to wait and go to your uh, website. You want to give us your website? If uh... Yeah, it's kirstenthien.com. K-I-R-S-T-E-N-T-H-I-E-N. -E -E and I'll sing a little bit of, uh, of uh, Say It Out Loud. Okay. Here we go. If you mic. want it, you got to go out and find it. Uh-oh. I can't tell you what it is, cause it's yours, not mine. It's that thing you saw when you were just a kid. It sparked your dreams, and you know it did. If you really want it, if you really want it, then say it out loud. Just say it out loud. Kiss and theme, <laughs> yay, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Sing a songwriter. And guitar player. Where's the guitar? I Which one are you using? The room. <laughs> <laughs> now hurry up, go get no money. Go get <laughs> Give us the website one more time where we can get, uh, get all your information. Kirstenthien.com. Kirsten, thank you so much. Thank God you. God bless you. Virtual hugs. Virtual hugs. Oh, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything. Thanks a lot. Kirsten Thien, right there. Singer, songwriter. She's a producer and a guitarist, too. She has a Final Cut Pro and a whole nine. We'll take a break right here. I've got more. And in fact, Bobby C is going to give you the latest in the, in the world of sports. Check it out.